Okay, so what happens when our favorite James Bond brand moves to New York City? Well, you go visit them and talk to the owner, Adam Holdsworth. Let's head in. David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. I am back with Adam Holdsworth. Adam, good to see you. Lovely to see you, David. I was traveling in on the train to New York City. Yes, we are not in London. And I was thinking about how long it's been. 2015, it's 2018. It's been yeah, a while. Yeah, three and a half years, I think, since we see you. I, you. And I think I, I pop out into your life around the time when a new Bond film is being made. Yeah, hopefully another one soon. Another one soon. We can only cross <laughs> our fingers. Um, but Adam has been good enough to invite all the viewers of the Bond experience into his new establishment. And like I said, it is in New York City. This is amazing. Yeah. No, really exciting. We've just opened a flagship here on... Madison Avenue, 952, and yeah, big moment for the brand. It's we're, we're huge. Really, yeah. Now, I have, to, I have to go backwards for a little bit because we actually have a lot of questions from our viewers, and one of them was, hey, you talk a lot about NPL and Bond, but NPL has history way before James Bond. Tell sure. us about the brand, tell us about the company, and even tell us about where you've taken it. Okay. Um, well, going right the way back, then you're... It was founded in 1936 by by Nat Peel, so you know you're going back a fair a fair while. Absolutely. Uh, it started in the Burlington Arcade, and he built it. It was a men's haberdashery business, and then he got into knitwear, and then started doing cashmere. Uh, and he was kind of the cashmere go-to guy uh, by the time he got into the 1950s. Uh -huh. uh, and you've got pictures of him arriving actually strangely into New York in 1956 with a soft white sweater for Marilyn Monroe. So No kidding. Yeah. So uh, he would hand deliver these to some of the celebrities? Yeah, that was a little bit of PR stunt. Well, but, sure, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he would uh, he would take a trunk, uh, a trunk show and so he'd go over to the East Coast and he'd work the East Coast and he'd take a suite in the local hotel and invite the local ladies to come oh, yeah. in and see his wares and then um, he was a very entrepreneurial guy, and so he had 20,000 customers up and down the East Coast in, by, nine, by the late 1950s. Oh my gosh. And then he started doing Hollywood and would go out and, uh, and do this very similar thing on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. And that's how he really built his business up. And so the great, the good of Hollywood and, around, you know, if they wanted a, a cashmere sweater, they, they always ended up back in the Burlington Arcade in London at some point, or buying from his... Uh, 
from his mail order business. So, Unbelievable. Yeah, and no, really good. He was good at PR then? You were kind of He was great at PR. He was a very entrepreneurial, dynamic guy and um, yeah, really built the business up to to a great level. Um, uh, and then uh, it did less well in the 1980s and 90s and um, other places did um, yeah. uh, until I bought it uh, 10 years ago and it kind of really got to a point where it needed completely reinvigorating and it's been a hugely exciting project. Why did uh, you buy it? I mean you saw something, did you see a fledgling brand that had some roots to it? What, what was the vision? I guess I, uh, I I, we, I'd studied the brand a few years earlier and then it came on the market and it was available to buy and for some reason I just got this real passion about about this brand called M Peel and, huh. and, and it just sort of got under my skin and, and that was it. I had to buy it and, and it's just been a really uh, exciting experience actually, reinvigorating the brand, driving the design and building it, it back up really from a very, very low basis. Well, it's, it pretty much stopped trading at 10 years ago, all but, and so sort of getting it back from that. And it's been fantastic. And I think that's one of the, the great things about NPL is that you really see people getting passionate, those people who get in, get in the brand and right. really understand it, get, become really passionate about it. And, and I share that. It's, it's a, well, and, and we've talked about that before. I think one of the things that I love about the brand and mm. the experience that you create is you do feel that passion. I mean, we do a lot of reviews of a lot of different brands yeah. that the passion is created. It's right. marketed, or not. I'm yeah. a marketer, so I I can yeah. tell when something yeah. is a little faux. Yeah. Um, but you know, your wife, for example, um, really runs your social media, so she connects with all the engagements. You help to run yeah. the social media moments. I mean, this is yeah. as grassroots and as authentic as you can get. So the passion, Absolutely. it really does come through. To yeah, me. and it's and it's really important about you know. I just I love the products oh. as well. I love making beautiful things, and you're wearing it <laughs> and proof. wearing it. But uh, and so that's that's you know a very essential element yeah. of, of the brand, uh, and I came out of the cashmere industry uh, from the grassroots side, so I really understood you know right the goats right way back in Mongolia, and right. that's it's a really important part of our uh, integrity, if you like, because you know when we when you buy the sweater, you buy the sweater from us, and we can take it all the way back and right the way through the supply chain, and we know where it's come from, um, right back to the herders out on the plains. And, and I think that's an important part because all of us do a lot of research on the celebrities that connect to NPL mm. and obviously James Bond and oh, which mm. scene and you know which fabric fold did it, don't get me started. But <laughs> the reality is, is there is a long journey that, yeah. for example, this that I purchased here in this New York store yeah. took before it gets to here. Tell us a little bit about that journey because it's not simple. Uh, no, it's a hugely involved process. I mean, creating, uh, you know, you look here and you, you just see lovely colors and knitwears and mm -hmm. different styles. Obviously, it's all got to be designed, but, but then the actual journey of the cashmere from, you know, it, it, these goats live out in the wilds of Mongolia, out on the plains, and it's because it's incredibly cold. You know, minus 22, minus 25 during the winter, average. So it gets even colder. So they grow cashmere, and that's then harvested. It's combed from the goat very ethically in the in the spring um, but then you've got a huge process you've got to sort it you've got to uh, wash it you've got to take out the coarse hair just before you can start using and then you've got the dyeing the spinning the knitting uh, it's just an incredibly involved process of, you know there's, there's there's literally a hundred different processes all the way through before we can you know you walk into the lovely boutique yeah. and you go yeah that's nice but actually there's a lot of a lot of substance going in behind that. And I want to I want to talk about a third person's point mm. of view. So I am yeah. not part of the NPO family. I'm a wonderful spectator outsider, but one yeah. of the things that I love that you've done as a company yeah. is that you've let us come in. So on Instagram and on Facebook, we can actually see pictures of your design team right. working together, what their workshops look like, their ideation meetings, what their, you know, what type of chips they're eating. You you invite us in. <laughs> and, and many of you don't know this, there are incredible videos of Adam going out onto the floors and 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 meeting you know and obviously traveling mm. the world and maybe you even saw in the sure. last couple of weeks so you're you know you yeah. can tell it's your instagram because you're <laughs> actually physically there 
Absolutely. involved in everything. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing to let us in like that. No, well, that's great. And it's a pleasure to have you. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we can tell you share some of the passion for the brand, which Little is fantastic. Bit. Little bit. <laughs> but, but let's be realistic. I mean, what started this spark, this ignition of passion, mm. is obviously the bond affiliation. Absolutely. And so when I came in here, it's not my first time in the store. I literally yeah. walked in the door and literally straight ahead saw this little puppy from Spectre. Very iconic now. Yeah. What happens in your mind as an owner yeah. when you find that James Bond, who I'm sure you were brought up with, absolutely, is suddenly wearing your pieces? Yeah. No, it's it's What's that like. Uh, it's a, it's an incredible feeling. I think as well, uh, it was really something special to get chosen, get a product chosen for Skyfall, and then to be involved in the design process, actually designing for Bond. Uh, and creating different prototypes and what they were looking for. So, you know, that kind of that iconic uh, dark grey turtleneck, you know, that's an amazing image. But, um, you know, that to be involved in that design process and then to get chosen, and it was very precise. Um, and then eventually there it is on a huge billboard on in Leicester Square in London. Amazing. It was, yeah, I kind of just had to kind of stop and go, whoa. Yeah. Did you ask it. any of your employees to go up there and paint and peel like in big white letter? <laughs> yeah. Something subtle. Yeah, no. so it's, subtle. Yeah. it's not the British way, people. It's not the British way. Yeah. So, so you just but, said that's terribly good. Yeah, that's that's great. Let's move on. Um, one thing you you brought up, and I didn't want to gloss over it, is yeah. that Skyfall. You obviously had that wonderful blue sweater. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the movie, everybody craved it and wanted it. But then for Spectre, yeah. you designed something. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Who gets, I mean, what happens? They phone you up and go, about Mr. Bond? Yeah, I mean, in, in uh, for Spectre, it was very much, they, of course, they know about the film and they, they were channeling a particular vibe and they were going back to a little bit more about the Roger Moore days. Mm. And, and so that sort of turtleneck era where, yeah. you know, of the, of the 1980s. And so that was what they were channeling. But uh, in doing that, um, and so they would pick up a super fine piece. They go, okay, oh yeah, no, no, I like this, but actually, we, can we do the turtleneck? And ah. uh, and so we'd grow, we'd literally, okay, what exactly, what shape, and exactly what height, and, right? And then even going through to the fitting, it'd be like, I think that's you know still three millimeters too too oh high, gosh. right? And we just need to get it, you know. And so it was an incredibly precise journey, right. and we probably designed five or six different styles for them and then just two got chosen. Right. So now I have a question that mm. you may not know the answer to honestly, but I'm okay. going to ask it anyway. Yeah. Um, and we did not prep this at all. <laughs> uh, so in the behind the scenes yeah. uh, photos and film of him talking to Mr. White with this sweater, Brian. there is a shot of him with short sleeve shirts on. Brian? Because obviously he was wearing the jacket, it was probably very hot, it was an on set, it wasn't oh, okay. at location. But part of me wanted to know, did they cut it off or did you design a short sleeve version of this? No, I think they probably chopped it off. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. What a shame. <laughs> short sleeve rail necks aren't necessarily. <laughs> oh, it's the newest thing. You see it on Madison Avenue next yeah, week. Yeah, it probably will. <laughs> but but that, that was a, a big question of mine. All right, roll forward. I mean, yeah. obviously, people and Peel has become synonymous with yeah. Bond iconic kit and uh, wonderful British brand. But we have another Bond coming up, possibly two. Wow! Yeah, Bond absolutely. Five. Yeah. Um, what are we hoping for as a brand? Um, as I said, we're hoping for for something, and we're hoping for everything. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's, 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 it's fingers crossed. No, we'd love to be back involved with the process and, and involved with the film and and we will be doing whatever we can to, to ensure that happens. Yeah, and yeah. I, th I think it's, you know, one of the things that I've loved that uh, Jani Tamin, who we've interviewed, and she's yeah. absolutely wonderful, very communicative with the fans and with the brands themselves, yeah. is she loves the British brands, but she loves the authenticity of so many of these things. And yeah. whenever somebody posts something about M. Peel, she is uh, on Instagram, and she will always have a wonderfully positive right. comment. So yeah, clearly, that's... not only a good relationship, but she herself, as a costume mm. designer, has had a very yeah. positive experience, which is important. Yeah, yeah. no, really important. And, and it's always been an absolute pleasure working with that team. Um, and we look forward to doing it for the next movie. And then the next one, and, and then the, the next, next one. one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are standing, like I said, several times in the New York City Madison Avenue yeah. store. I have to ask you, because I've been to the Burling Arcade, I've been to several of your stores, beautiful, mm. you're a British brand. Why New York? 
Well, New York. Well, I think going back to the original part of the interview, you know, it was actually where. Uh, Nat Peel first came, uh, so actually we're kind of going full circle, we're coming back to New York. Um, it's our biggest customer base and customer, biggest fan base outside of the UK. Um, That's true. So it makes sense to us to come to New York. Not an easy market to crack, but um, lots of opportunity and it's it's more than just the store. You know, we're online in, in the States and uh, and it's helping to, to promote that and, and give a, a, a space for people to come and visit that are in New York and, and further afield and uh, hugely exciting times for us. It's very exciting. I have yeah. to say, even again, that third person point of view, when you walk in here, it's incredibly inviting there. Um, and I mentioned this the last time to some of your staff, and I'm going to just say it. There yeah. are many stores, yes, even some on Madison Avenue, where you walk mm -hmm. in and you feel a bit afflicted. Mm -hmm. um, there's a gatekeeper mm -hmm. and then somebody follows you and they ask a lot of questions yeah. and this is so inviting and, and dare I say yeah. I've already heard from some people that are yeah. Bond fans who have walked in here the Bond fan is embraced whereas right. some other stores they're just like oh, oh yeah. you're one of the hosts call security <laughs> no they don't do that but um, you, you really it's created a very welcoming atmosphere no, well, that's fantastic. Really, really great to hear that that feedback. It's something that I particularly hate myself as a shopper. I can't stand going into a store and feeling like <gasps> I can't touch anything. I can't. I've just got to run away. That's right. Uh, and so having a, a very open uh, and softer feel, and so you've got a little bit more of a homely atmosphere in the yes. in there. And we're bringing a touch of London, but in a nice. Uh, easy, uh, approachable, integrated. Yes, yeah, very approachable, approachable. Manual, you know, the really important. <laughs> well, I have to say the other, the yeah. other point with um, this type of an atmosphere is NPL as a yeah. brand, because it's cashmere, begs to be touched. I mean, this piece, really? the reason I, I purchased it mm. on the spot very quickly mm. was I was molesting it in a way. <laughs> I mean, when you come in here, if you don't feel the, the hand and the feel yeah. of this, you're missing probably 50% of the experience. So if you had to keep it at bay, like I, we go into so many shops, they're under glass yeah. cases. Right, yeah. Um, when I first came in, it's still like yeah. this too. We'll, we'll do a strafing round. Your drawers yeah. are wide open. Yeah. It's almost like going into somebody's bedroom and going, I think I have permission to go through their underwear drawer. <laughs> that was a nice analogy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you have we'll to right. out. It's about being right. It's about being approachable. And yeah, uh, and yeah get in there, touch the, touch the, uh, touch the merchandise, feel what it's like, and uh, get part of that experience. I love it. Yeah. Well, first of all, yeah. thank you today for no. this experience. Thank you. I, I want to invite everybody, mm. if you're coming to New York, if you're not coming to New York, get on a plane and come to New York, check this out. It's not just about the brand. I've said this so many times. It's not just about the Bond connection. Mm. It is truly about the experience. There are yeah. so many places to visit on Madison Avenue. Make this one of them. I think you'll really enjoy it. Adam, thank you so much. Great. Thank Thanks you for very everything much. you do. Thank you very much, David. We'll talk to you all soon. Take care. Oh, hey, you're still here. I didn't even know. Uh, you listen, while you're here, uh, if you want, I, I, so I would actually go to this button right here and click on it because then you actually subscribe to our vlogs. It's amazing. Um, you get to see all the upcoming stuff first, you get notifications, it screams at you while you're at work, it's absolutely amazing. Just click on this button, hit subscribe, just move your cursor, move, 